Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Breakthrough Active. This is episode 36. As always, I'm here with Mitch. How are you? Good afternoon, mate. I'm doing pretty well. Excited for today's podcast. We actually filmed this one last week, but had a bit of a technical issue and it got erased. So we're going to have to try to recount some of that uh, conversation that we had <laughs> this time seven days ago. Hopefully it's better the second time around. So let's get straight into it. We really do want to keep these podcasts short so you can just absorb all this information to make sure that we don't waffle on because we're known for our waffling and I'm waffling right now. So episode 36, yep. ways to reduce calories without actually counting calories. Now this episode has stemmed from our recent challenge that we're doing, uh, our 30 day healthy eating challenge. And we're seeing some really good results. And what we've done is we've implemented some strategies, some rules around ways to reduce your calories if you do want to lose body fat without actually having to count calories. Because over the last 12 months, 24 months of coaching lots of people, counting calories definitely does work. But for a lot of people, it doesn't work. And just because it's easy to say, eat less calories and move more and track your calories, it doesn't mean that it's easy to do. And that's what we found. Yeah, we found people who came to us wanting to lose some body fat and improve their body composition uh, had troubles counting calories, had trouble committing to, to being someone who was needing to keep track of everything they ate, you know, in my fitness pal or, or a similar style of that. So over the last year or two, like Jamie mentioned, we have worked with a lot of people and found this to be an ongoing, I guess, problem for people. So the challenge that we have and we're in the middle of at the moment, we try to find an alternative for people who are looking to get healthier and perhaps lose some body fat without necessarily having to keep track of everything they eat and keep track of the calories they're consuming. Yeah, just so we're clear, the majority of diets that you ever heard of, whether it's ketogenic, intermittent fasting, uh, paleo, Atkins, Weight Watchers, Light and Easy, they're all similar. They are just different ways to try and help someone get into a calorie deficit. For us, what we believe, this is the simplest way to get into a calorie deficit. But quite often when you hear about being in a calorie deficit and fat loss, it's purely around fat loss and not actually about your health. Just because you can lose body fat does not mean you are healthy. If you starve yourself for a week and walk lots, you will lose weight. But is that good weight? Is that healthy weight? Is that sustainable? Absolutely not. So we want to put in three things that we believe that are sustainable long-term. I'm going to hand it over to you, Mitch. What is the first thing? So the first one that we address, and this is what the whole 30-day uh, healthy eating challenge is based off, these next three things. And the first one is hydration. We feel like that a lot of the time when people are looking to perhaps lose some fat or you know, looking to put on some muscle or whatever it may be, they do sometimes neglect drinking enough water. So we wanted to make that first and foremost important thing within our challenge and for people within our challenge their daily goal is to drink at least three liters of water we feel like for a lot of people that they will drink even more than this and especially on days like today it is quite hot and for those of you especially if you are outside or you have worked out you are probably wanting to consume more than that but as a base we feel as though three liters is a good amount and a healthy amount for people to try to reach each day we think that if people in the past perhaps have been trying to lose weight and they are counting calories or they are doing light and easy or they are doing paleo or whatever it is, it doesn't really address water consumption. You know, there might be a, a little bit of information on it or something that just gets set in the fine print of, of the information that you receive for those different diets, but it's not one of the main focuses. So that's why we wanted to make it the main focus because as you know, you, probably know our body is 90% water and cannot function without water so we wanted to make that the most important thing well a great example is if you look at a bodybuilder or a very muscular person if they're dehydrated they look completely different to an hour later if they are hydrated reason being is that our muscle is a majority of water our water helps transport nutrients to our muscles to help rebuild when you actually lose body fat, you actually actually oxidize it and you actually urinate it out. So water is a critical component of building muscle and losing body fat. And I heard this a while ago, and it's a great analogy that 
like losing body fat or building muscle is a very, very stressful event for your body. Your body does not want to build muscle. It does not want to lose body fat. It wants to remain at homeostasis exactly how it is because it's the easiest thing to do. It's the most efficient thing for us to do. So if you're not hydrated, if you're not sleeping well, if your body isn't in an optimal situation, that body is not going to want to, want to undertake that stressful event, such as losing body fat or building muscle. Like hydration, it is absolutely everything. And it's something that I'm definitely guilty of. And it's actually helped me throughout this challenge too. Because you, you can, you can, dot, you, you can dot, your, dot your eyes, cross your T's, but if you're not drinking water, you're gonna have issues. Yeah, and we feel as though if people are so focused on the food they're eating, yes, they might start to see some, some progress with their weight or you know, they might start to see the scales move or start to you know, lose some body fat and, and experience a bit of different in their, their tone. But if they're not feeling good because they're not drinking enough water, then, then what's it really all for? You know, we, as much as we are wanting people to, to make physical changes, we want them to feel good as well. And if people aren't drinking enough water, they're probably going to be feeling sluggish. They're going to encounter headaches they're not going to be feeling as good as they could, especially if they are exercising and training quite regularly. So that's why we wanted to put that right at the top of the list and make that the main priority for people looking to, to make a change. If you have a long-term fat loss goal, like I could make an argument that feeling good throughout the process is the most important thing after actually being in a calorie deficit. If you are feeling good about yourself, if you are sleeping well, if you are hydrated, if you are training, if you are happy, it is so much easier to adhere to a meal plan or, or follow a certain diet for a long period of time we all know that when we're stressed out we're not feeling good that's more likely the time that we are going to reach for that snack or have that dinner or start drinking and all those unplanned events yeah and i think sometimes if people maybe aren't feeling great and like i said they are feeling sluggish getting headaches short on energy it can be very easy for them just to blame the changes in the nutrition that they've made but forgetting that they are only drinking a liter of water a day so sometimes it can be a little bit, a bit of a uh, misdirection in terms of what may be causing those feelings. And we feel as though that hydration does cure a lot of them. We hear that I can't start my day without coffee. How about you can't start your day without water? <laughs> your most essential thing. Yeah. Body. People will argue there's water in coffee. I actually get in trouble whenever Ellen has a headache. And, like, and I, 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 whenever Ellen comes home with a headache or a migraine, I'm like, how much water you drunk? Like, it's not the water. I'm like, it, it probably is the water. I'll stay out of that one. But, uh, but I feel as though for, for most people, it is just a habit thing. It's a behavioral thing. If you've got water with you, you are going to drink more of it. And that, that's one thing that we've, we've kind of uh, encouraged all our challenge members to do is have a big bottle of water with them. Because if you are having to travel to the, to the fridge and pour yourself a glass of water, eight, 10, 12, 20 times a day, then it's just not going to happen. So so like a lot of fish and, and, and health, that is just a habit-based, I guess, change that people are looking to make. And we feel like if you change that behavior, then you're going to be in, in the, the best opportunity to be able to see the improvements in your hydration and how you feel. All right, let's move on to category two. Category two was protein intake. Now, how we, if we were getting all scientific about it, ideally you should have 1.5 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So if I weigh 100 kilos, I'm going to have 150 grams. What that looks like is typically two serves of, of meat or your vegetarian, vegan options, maybe a yogurt and maybe a protein shake. And I'm going to well and truly smash my protein goal out of the park. What we've done for the challenge is we just encourage everyone to have two servings of protein, which is typically meat for lunch or once again, that vegetarian option or meat or that vegetarian option for dinner. Yeah, we, we feel as though in the past when we have given people protein goals in terms of grams, like we mentioned there at the beginning, it can just be a little bit too overwhelming for people, you know, that they are finding them, themselves that they're, they're measuring and weighing just about everything they eat. They're, they're stressed if they're not quite at that protein mark. They, they're looking at the back of nutrition panels all the time to see if there's any protein in it. So we wanted just to simplify that. And that the best way that we felt that we could do that was to, to say, let's eat a minimum of two protein servings a day, knowing full well that if people are eating two protein sources a day or servings a day, there are going to be other parts of their nutrition that has protein in it. And by default, those two main servings plus all the other extras that they are getting through their veggies or you know their rice or their yogurt or whatever it is, it is probably going to add up to be close to that number that, that Jamie mentioned there, which is one and a half times your body weight. 
Maybe not necessarily will be exactly that amount. Maybe it'll be a bit less. Maybe it'll be a little bit more. But we feel like it is going to be round about that area. And that's where we felt like if we're able to simplify that and make that a little bit easier for people to track, then they're more likely to adhere to it. What you just said is exactly what this challenge is about. It's about just consistently doing the wrong thing over a long period of time and not worrying about the day-to-day -day thing. I've seen meal plans and it's 1,868 calories. And then if someone's at 1,680 calories, they got a minus 12 from the next day. Once again, you can, and you can see how complicated that would be if you're a mother of three raising a family, cooking for the entire family, and you're sifting out your portion of those 1,878 calories or preparing dinner for the other people. So we just want to keep it as simple as possible. And with nutrition, it's not sexy. We can't, we can't, set, we can't sell you this expensive nutrition plan. We're just, we're just trying to keep it as simple for you as possible. And I think when nutrition's overcomplicated, because when it's overcomplicated, people are trying to sell you a keto plan or, or a minute fasting plan or Atkins plan or paleo plan or the other 50 plans that you've heard of. Yeah, we, we found that, you know, what, what date is it today? The 19th, I think. We're, we're two thirds of the way into the 30 days and, and we're feeling as though that adherence is, is being quite good. And I'd probably go out on a limb and say it's better than, than challenges gone in the past. And, and I think the only change within that from, from the challenge perspective is that it is easier to adhere to. You know, we're, we're not trying to get too caught up in numbers or too caught up in the particulars. We're looking at those three broad, broad spectrums, I guess you'd say. And we feel as though protein along with water and the next one that we'll discuss are the most, most important. But like Jamie mentioned, if, if you are trying to zone in on something and find something to the nearest calorie or hitting your protein goal to the nearest gram, you, you can end up being four grams off leading, leading into bedtime and you go and have a quarter of a tablespoon of peanut butter to try to hit your protein goal, knowing full well that the next day you're going out for dinner and it doesn't, four grams isn't going to be catered for. So we feel like if you do the right thing most of the time, and, and that's why we put a lot of thought into those two servings, we, we did sort of have a think about that and think is, is three something that, that might be a little bit more, I guess, correct or, or close to that amount, but we feel as though the two for the most part is going to be enough for people. The other thing too is like, imagine if we were doing it down to the exact calorie, exact gram of protein, and I was encouraging everyone to log in my fitness pal every single day, screenshot it and send it to me. Just that, that is not easy to do. That, that just having to do that alone is stressful enough that will, that will put someone off from doing the challenge. When if we're just nailing these three categories, everyone can do it. Everyone. And even if you've got an event on, you've got a wedding on, you can still get these three categories in. And once again, it's the long term game. It is getting results over a long period of time. This is not the 30 day shred challenge. We're trying to instill these really good behavioral habits, which will carry over into the next 30 years of life. Unlike at the end of the 30 day shred challenge, day 31, it's a free for all. I think that was really important for us when we were thinking about how we are going to set up the challenge and part of our conversations and, and part of what we wanted to, to make sure that we, we did was if someone does have something on the weekend, or, or, or during the week or, you know, on, on, a, on the weekend, obviously is more, more common. If someone has a wedding or a night out or a party or something in the evening, they don't have to just say, okay, today's done. Like I've got the party on tonight, no chance. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to adhere to, to the challenge today. So I'm just going to forget about it. But if you've got a party on at seven o'clock at night, you can make sure you drink a little bit of extra water throughout the morning and the afternoon to get your three liters in knowing full well that you're not going to have any at night time because you're going to be having a few drinks. You can get your two protein servings in for lunch and breakfast, and you can eat a bunch of fruit and veggies through the day. Maybe have a, a protein smoothie that's jam-packed full of, of everything there. So we wanted it to be something that even if you are busy, even if you've got something on, even if you're away on holidays, you are still able to adhere to it because we don't believe that it should just be something that you do when conditions are optimal through the week, Monday to Friday, when your work schedule's in place and you don't have any other of these variables, you know, taking part because life is full of these variables and we need to do our best to manage those variables. And we feel as though, you know, the approach that we have for this challenge is something that people can do. Yeah. We had members not do this challenge because they have one night out on the, on the 22nd of November. And that, that, 
all or nothing mentality. We really want to break that. We want, we want to destroy that mindset off our members from everyone because I, I don't care what you do on the 22nd of November. It, it, it is the, the other 29 days and nights of your water intake, your protein intake, spoilers, vegetable, and how are you sleeping and are you training? It's not like we, we do not become overweight on in one night. Like success is not one event. It is just, or failure is not one event. It is just constantly doing the right thing day after day after day. And if we need to do it day after day after day, then it has to be very achievable. It can't be that low barrier to entry to complete this challenge. Yeah, and that, and that was important for us because although it is getting towards the end and there might be a few more work, our Christmas parties coming up and a few more social things, throughout the year, you're always going to have something on. You know, it's always someone's birthday. It's always a kid, one of your kids' birthdays. It's always something to do with work. There are always going to be things on so instead of just saying okay i've got this coming up let's just forget about my nutrition like i mentioned before we want to be able to incorporate some things and i guess some behavior changes to make sure that it, it isn't that all or nothing mentality that, that we see a lot of people have yeah and now let's get back onto protein just for one more second before we move on why is protein so great why do we need protein and why do we choose two serves protein is the is essential macronutrient if we are trying to maintain muscle while we're losing body fat which is really important we're not trying to lose weight we're trying to lose body fat and it is also the essential macronutrient when we are trying to build muscle if we have a high protein diet our body is more likely to drive the calorie surplus the energy into building muscle and vice versa if we have a high protein diet the weight that we lose is going to be more likely from um, body fat stores and not muscle the other thing too is protein is very satiating so you have 100 grams of potato or 100 grams of chicken, the chicken is going to keep you fuller for longer. One more thing too, protein is harder to digest in your body. Therefore, the more protein that you eat, your body actually expends more energy. So it keeps you full for longer. It helps you build muscle or maintain muscle and it keeps you full for longer. Three things that I think we could all need. We all want to have more muscle. We all, we all want to be full for longer. And we, we all want to burn more energy. Therefore, we can eat more food. So once again, it is just... It is crucial. It is second after water. I think one of the, before we move on, some of the older diets and older meal plans that you, you, you might have seen or you know, we've seen and, and you guys listening might have seen, I eat just calorie counting or Weight Watchers or even Light and Easy. They don't really take into consideration protein. You know, I know Weight, uh, weight Watchers, I think it's like a 20 point system and you've got to try and keep under those points. You can do those 20 points with Simple. foods that are purely, yeah, purely carbohydrates. Same, same with if you're calorie counting, if you're trying to hit 1,500 calories a day, you can make that up of 90% fat and carbs. And then by the end of the, you've only got 10% protein, which might, might be 30 grams a day. So I think a lot of the, the newer, more modern ones do take it into consideration. But for those of you who maybe have have done those in the past or, or maybe even in more recent times, you've tried to calorie count again or you know, go back to Weight Watchers or whatever it is. They, they really are a flawed system. And I think you know, a, lot of, a lot of more knowledge has come out in the last you know, decade or so where it does show the importance of protein. And, and just like Jamie said, for, for our people, even if you aren't looking to pack on a huge amount of muscle, lean muscle, tissue, especially as we get older, is, is even more important than when, when we're younger. So that's why we are huge advocates for people to eat uh, for, for eating enough protein. One last thing, protein powder is definitely useful for hitting your daily protein intake, but I would not rely on it. It is a supplement, but it is definitely helpful if you are in a rush. And once again, I want to make this for, for you as simple as possible. If you haven't got your protein served for lunch, I don't expect you to miss a work they need to run out and cook, cook some steak. That's where powder can be very, very helpful. Yeah, agreed. Or in, obviously in something like smoothies, when you mix it with other things, it can be a great, great way to, to still get a serving of protein without having to have a smoothie and then some eggs on the side or something. Now, Mitch, what would, what would you mix a smoothie with and what is our third category? Yep. So that leads into our third and final one, which is fruit and vegetables. So we, like Jamie mentioned at the start, we feel as though a lot of the time the health component of losing body fat, losing weight, you know, tracking calories, tracking macros, whatever it is, is without the emphasis and without a focus of eating enough fruit and vegetables. So we, we thought long and hard about this and 
came to the to the roundabout number of aiming for our sorry our challenges to be aiming to eat 700 grams of fruit and vegetables each day and we felt as though that's not something that's going to be easy not something that you'll be able to do without a concerted effort but we feel as though if you are eating that much fruit and that much veg every single day it's not going to leave that much more i guess appetite or room in your belly or <laughs> hunger or whatever however you want to put it uh, to be still hungry yeah so we wanted people to to be able to still eat a lot of food i.e fruit and veg which typically are more more dense in i guess their calories and fiber and and if they eat all of that, they eat their protein sources, they drink enough water and they're still hungry, they can have whatever they want. We didn't want to be restrictive. We wanted to be adding things to people's nutrition. And that's why we thought that eating 700 grams a day, albeit a lot, we felt as though people are able to do that. It will probably negate the need for a lot of people to be going back for seconds or, or eating something after dinner or snacking excessively. Well, in like, let's take away the numbers. That's probably three pieces of fruit and three cups of vegetables. You include that with it, two servings of protein, your steak and your chicken, and three liters of water, you're gonna be full. You're gonna be feeling great. And as Mitch said, it is just gonna help you stay on track for longer. And just like protein, vegetables are very, very satiating. I challenge you to eat 200 calories of broccoli and then add 200 calories of Tim Tams. You'll find that you'll probably won't get through the bowl of broccoli, but the Tim Tams is 2.3 maybe, 2.3 maybe. So what this challenge is about in terms of the water and the protein and the vegetables is high volume, low calorie options that can keep you full for longer. So all the foods, all, all those three things, they are high volume. So there is a lot of it for, that is really nutrient dense. So will fill your body while being low calorie, which, which is two great things when, when you are trying to lose body fat. And we didn't want to be restrictive with anything either. I touched on it just earlier, but... I feel as though the, the, the human mind, if they're told that they're not allowed to have something, they're going to want that even more. And especially once they finish the challenge or once they move on, that's going to be the first thing that, that they want. So instead of doing like a no sugar challenge or a no takeaway challenge or no coffee challenge, no alcohol challenge, whatever it is, we, wanted, we didn't want to put that barrier on things. We didn't want to put that restraint on people. We, we wanted people, if they are still wanting to, to have those things that they can, but it just can't be at the expense of not eating those fruit and veg enough protein or not drinking enough water. So we feel as though that for people to be adhering to something longer term, then it needs to be something that they enjoy. It can't be something that they, you know, they can't wait to be over or they despise or find it you know, too unattainable to continue with beyond the period that the challenge is for. And that's why we didn't want to take anything away from people. If they enjoy having fast food on Friday nights, then do it. If you enjoy having some chocolate after dinner every night, then do it. As long as you've done those other things, then you can have those quote unquote guilt free. I mean, we wanted that to be one of the main things as well. One of the main messages that we, that we got across that it doesn't have to be pulling things out of your nutrition and restricting yourself rather adding some more of that good stuff and then you can still enjoy those things that you, you might have from time to time. Awesome, so we've got uh, water intake, we've got protein, we've got vegetables. Let's wrap this thing up and, and where those three categories came from. And it's for us, it is the low hanging fruit. It is the simplest thing to change in your meal plan, your life that causes the least amount of disruption. That is so crucial for you to get results long-term. So we wanna, we wanna, imp we wanna choose sorry, choose a low hanging fruit. So what are things that we can change today, right now, it's gonna drastically improve your health without causing major destruction, uh, major disruptions. And that is water, protein, vegetables. And they're three things that me and you still work on every single day. And they're three things that every single body, every single person should work on. Yeah, I feel like 99.99% .99 of people, if they focus on those three things would be healthier. Yeah. And, and that's, that's I might even be selling it short there. I feel like if people are doing those three things, and like I said, I think the main thing and probably the biggest challenge for people that we've seen in the last couple of weeks is that 700 grams of veg. Um, so if people are putting a bit more of an emphasis on that, and I think that's the key when you are eating all that good stuff, it's not going to lend 
itself for you still being hungry. And I feel like that's a lot of the time where people do overeat is because they're simply just not satiated or not satisfied or not full after their meal because they are eating, I guess, foods that maybe aren't quite as calorie dense. They don't have quite as much fiber or quite as much vitamins and minerals. So they finish their meal and their, their mind and their body still thinks they're hungry. So within the next half an hour, they're having seconds or they're having some dessert not long after because they still feel as though that they're, they're wanting more. And, and we feel as though that if people are filling themselves up with good quality food, enough water, enough protein, lots of fruit and veg, then it's really going to decrease the amount of those extras that people have and definitely decrease the amount of overeating people do. And although we've never spoke about fat loss in the challenge other than this this podcast here we feel as though that there are going to be people who do see some really great fast fat loss changes and at no point have we spoke about calories at no point have we spoke about fat loss at no point have we spoke about focusing on that or what's your goal or you know what are you trying to how much weight are you trying to lose in these 30 days but we feel like that's going to be a byproduct of, of eating healthier well you don't try and climb that everest you just start walking up a small hill yeah and exactly the hill, right. The hill gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you start doing more mountains. But and I'll give you the exact opposite of the challenge. It's where someone would go get a DEXA scan, where they would get like a body fat percentage reading. Now, if someone is holding more body fat under their subscap, which is a rotator cuff here, <laughs> science suggests that that person wouldn't digest carbohydrates well. So then the, the person who does that DEXA scan who realize, hey, there's a bit of body fat there, they'd put them on a low carbohydrate diet. Now just, just wrap your head around that. Just going to get a DEXA scan, paying for that, because you've got body fat here, you've got to choose this certain diet. How long is that person going to follow that diet for? Is that even right? Or should that person just drink some more water, eat some more protein, and have some more vegetables? It's just, it's so overcomplicated. And, and, it's, and that's a dangerous cycle that people can get into. Because let's just say someone starts that and they do it for two weeks and they lose four or five kilos and then they stop doing it and they put all that weight back on and then probably some more. For, for the rest of time, they think, I know what I've got to do to lose weight. It, it's me going on a low carb diet and there's no other way around it. When I was doing it, I, I lost like five kilos in two weeks and they're probably telling their friends and their friends are like, well, it's incredible. I'll, I'll do the same. I, I, and then I lost five kilos in two weeks. But the, but the reality... <laughs> Let me check out the back of your scubs got subscapularis. But and then all of a sudden, like I mentioned, they they think that is the only way for them to see see results and them to see progress, but it's just not something you can do for very long. And then that cycle continues of trying something, finishing that, trying something, finishing that, yo-yo diets, yo-yo weight. You know, you, you probably know the story if you're listening that's, to this. That's the exact person that does a shake diet, loses weight, they put weight back on. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the shake diet again. Or they try something else that's just as restrictive. So we wanted to really do the exact opposite of that. And that's why we didn't have any scans. We, we didn't have people weigh in. We, we didn't do any of that. We, we just wanted people to focus on these three things and we feel like the results will take care of themselves. And it's just like what you said before about if they nail those three things, everyone will be healthier. I'll expand on that. If you're sleeping a good amount, six to eight hours a night of good sleep, if you're drinking water, eating protein, eating vegetables, being semi-active, like a half hour walk a day, weight training three or four times a week, obesity would not exist on planet Earth. Not even close. No one would be, over, no would be, one would be overweight. Yeah, but the, 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 the problem is, instead of just doing those very seven simple things that you can do right now today, like don't even, like, you can do push-ups, you can go for a walk right now, you can drink water, you can have some vegetables. But they're, going, they're going down to the supplement shop to get the DEXA scan. When like you look in the mirror and you're clearly, you know that you're overweight. You don't need a DEXA scan to tell you that you're overweight and you don't need this machine to tell you that you can't have fruit because fruit's a carbohydrate and you don't tolerate it well. It's not, it's not, it's not the fruit, it's, it's the KFC on top of the McDonald's, on top of the poor, poor sleep habits, on top of the large amount of inactivity that you've been doing. It's just, it, it drives me crazy because it's just, it's, it, it, it's we 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 touched a bit of a sore spot here for both of us, so we, we might we might end it there before we continue along this tangent. But we like in summary, we we wanted to make things simple, like Jamie mentioned that the low hanging fruit 
We wanted it to be something that people could do easily. We wanted it to be uh, something that people could do consistently. And we want these people to be doing this well over the challenge. We wanted this to be a Kickstarter for them. We feel as though it's something that's sustainable, something that they can continue with. We feel as though people are going to see some good results in this first month. And, and our hope is that people continue with it. And, and if, if nothing else, that we, we feel like we've, we've provided some really great information and albeit simple information. At, at no point are we talking about any of these scientific terms or things that people don't understand. We wanted it to be water. We wanted it to be protein. We wanted it to be fruit and veggies. And if those three things are the staple of your diet, then you're going to be living a healthy life. Absolutely. I'm still really, I'm really annoyed now. I, I, I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see, I can see your eye twitching. It's just like, angry. Uh, it's just one of those it's things. Layers. It's good. It's yeah, good. Uh, it's good. Okay. All right, guys, thank you for listening. This one will record. We will upload today. If you have any questions, as always, please ask. We'll be back every Friday. Next episode will be episode 27. And we might carry on this conversation. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks, mate. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.